first application that we're dealing with is the taser being used in what they call arc mode, which is pressing a button alongside the taser that causes the front of the taser to have electricity on it so that you can use it to deliver a shock against someone that would cause pain. You do that by pressing your finger alongside kind of the edge of the taser. Officer uh, B was responding to assist Sergeant A, who was attempting to take Mr. Kluge to custody. Officer B stated in his interview and in his reports that he believed that the appellant was resisting arrest and was not complying with the sergeant's directions. He believed that the appellant was turning and raising his fist in order to strike him. So under the directive, he is perceiving what we call active aggression, which is a threat or an actual attempt to uh, cause an injury to somebody else, with the uh, combined with the ability to actually do it. So he decided at that point that he was going to use his taser. He warned the appellant that he was going to use the taser, and it did not change the behavior. With that arc button that he attempted to push down, he put the taser into the opponent's back, and he attempted to deliver five seconds of current. Now during that time, uh, we don't have our taser director or taser uh, instructor here tonight. We did it the previous one. He testified that one of the problems with the X2 is that if you're moving around trying to maintain a contact, your finger can slip off and on to that arc button. So the record that we had up on the screen shows that there's a three second deployment followed by two one seconds, all within a five second period. So the finger most likely came off of that button twice during the first attempt to deliver a five second cycle. The officer was unaware that any of this happened until after they looked at the taser download and can determine if there are any individual ones. So at that time, Officer B believed that he had applied one taser cycle during that first application. In fact, he deployed three under the weighted count. Any portion of a five second cycle or any push of a button counts as a cycle. The officer continued to testify that he believed that the appellant was not complying with their efforts to take him into custody. The officer testified that he got kicked and fell to the ground at one point. And the officer then testified that he decided to do a second application, which is actually the fourth cycle, and he used it in the same arc button for a three second stun to the back of the appellant's left calf. There's a 16 second gap between the end of the first applications and then that next one. He basically stated in his interviews that he believed that the taser was having some effect, but it was not lasting long enough to allow the officers to maintain and uh, get control of Mr. Glute and actually take him into custody. So he decided to use the taser with the probes because he knew that the probes allowed him a larger spread could possibly create what we call muscle lockup because the current would be traveling between the actual two taser probes. He fired those into Mr. Kluge's back and it was a five second cycle. At the conclusion of that five second cycle, the officers were able to take the appellant into custody and give him a handcuffs. Then we have the sixth cycle, which is represented by the one second burst, which appears to be a tap or a press. Now, in my finding, I have a discussion about this. Officer B was unaware that this even existed until after I think we had the file review for the first time that we were here on this and it went back because there were some issues about it. He was interviewed about it. He was not aware that it even happened. He believes that he probably put his finger alongside the taser and during that point hit the button. Officers are trained to index, is what we call it, put your finger alongside the side of a weapon, not on the trigger. He had years of training to do that. The X2 is designed, it's the button right there. Okay. My finding is based on the idea that we attempt to punish and find things unreasonable when there is some intent behind it. And Officer B had no intent in the situation. That's the, that's the bulk of this here. At all times, Officer B consistently testified that he was looking to see what kind of reaction he was getting from the use of the UCW, 
and continued to see what he thought was active aggression. At the time that he finally fired those probes, he testified that he believed that they were losing the fight and needed to do something additional to try to win. So under the totality of the circumstances here, I think we see a consistent use of the ECW maintaining the level of force that they've been using from the outset, not accelerating it or you know, raising it to a higher level of force in an attempt to control the crowd. That's the, uh, that's the sum of my uh, explanation for that.